Welcome back to another video on the channel, everyone. I've just finished recording the UFC 284 main card predictions video. Unfortunately, the quality of the video isn't too great. Our internet is very bad here at the moment, but the audio is still fine, so make sure you tune into the whole video and leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're talking UFC 284's main card and my predictions, so... Can't wait for these fights. Uh, come back to Australia for the first time for the UFC since 2019 at the Rack Arena in Perth. Can't wait for these fights. I tried getting tickets and I just couldn't get any tickets. They sold out within a couple of days. So really a shame not to get any tickets, but I'll be going to watch it at my local uh, place that I always go to. So really looking forward to watching these fights. It's going to be a great main card as well. And some of, the, some of these guys that aren't even on the main card, really looking forward to seeing. So you've got Tyson Pedro, who's now actually uh, City Kickboxing. He's not even on the main card. He's the main for on the prelims. Jay Malarkey as well. And then Shane Young. So a couple of guys from, obviously Malarkey from Australia, Shane Young from uh, New Zealand as well. So plenty of New Zealand and Australian talent here that aren't on the main card. But that just means we've got a great main card coming up. So five really good fights. I think these five fights are going to be what MMA fans are really going to be excited about, and obviously, especially the main event and the co-main event, obviously the two main standouts, in particular the main event. But we'll get to the first fight, which is Jimmy Crew and Alonzo Menafield at light heavyweight. So the odds for this fight, Jimmy Crew is $1.51. He is the favorite. Alonzo Menafield is the underdog at two fifty six. So Jimmy Crew was is now 12-3. and three. Started his UFC career 12-1. and one, Came from Dana White's Contender Series in 2018 with four wins from five in the UFC before... Injury against Anthony Smith, where he lost that fight, and then Jamal Hill as well, which who is now the light heavyweight champion of the world. So a couple of losses that really it's not that uh, damning on your resume. And then Alonzo Menafield there, 13-3. and three. He's on a two-fight win streak, and he um, has won four of his last five. So this is going to be a tough test for Jimmy Crute here, but my prediction for the fight, I think Jimmy Crute's going to get the job done here. I think being a home crowd as well, going to give him a little bit of an advantage there, and I think Alonzo Menafield would be a tough test for him, but I do think Jimmy Crook will come out on top. So I think he'll win there. Next fight is at heavyweight, Justin Taffer and Parker Porter. So the odds for this fight, Justin Taffer is $1.81 and Parker Porter is $2.04. So Parker Porter, obviously the underdog there. Justin Taffer, 5-3, and three, but he is 2-3 and three in the UFC. So he has been a bit sort of inconsistent, win-loss, win-loss a little bit there. But coming off a nice win against uh, Henry Hunsucker with a first-round finish there. Um, and then Parker Porter, thirteen and seven. He's on a. Uh, he was on actually a three fight winning streak before he lost to Jelton Almeida, who is a, is the rising star in the heavyweight division. So, yeah, unfortunately, ran into just a guy that was just too good. There prediction for this fight. This fight could literally go either way. Both guys throw heavy hands, heavyweights. We know that this fight could be finished any moment. I just lean towards Parker Porter with the experience, uh, having the more experience in the UFC for for one, but just having more um, fights under his belt. But I just do lean just to Parker Porter, who actually is the underdog there. So um, that's my pick for that one. Welterweight is Jack Della Maddalena and um, again up against Randy Brown at welterweight. So Jack Della Maddalena is the favourite in this one, a dollar twenty nine, with Randy Brown being a quite a heavy underdog at three sixty six. So Jack Della Maddalena, that's tongue twister that one, uh, thirteen and two. Finding his hometown the Perth, so not only is he getting the home country advantage, he's also getting the hometown advantage as well. So come from Daniel White's Contender Series in 2021, he's 3-0 in the UFC, all first round finishes, and he's also got back-to-back -back performance tonight bonuses, so he's had an amazing start to his UFC career. But he is coming up against a very dangerous guy in Randy Brown, who's 16-4. As I said, dangerous point for him. He's on a four-fight win streak. He's won six of his last seven as well, with his only loss to Vicente Luque there. It, it's going to be a tough test for Jack Della Maddalena. So uh, I do think, though, that uh, Della Maddalena is going to get the job done at home, make it four from four in the UFC. But this is definitely his toughest test to date in the UFC. Moving on to the two main fights here. So these ones we're going to talk a little bit more about. So the interim title fight between Yair Rodriguez and Josh Emmett. So the odds for this one, Yair Rodriguez is the favorite here at $1.52 and Josh Emmett is the underdog at two fifty three. So, Yair Rodriguez, 15-3. Since he lost to Frank Kiger back in 2017, he's been on a fantastic run. He finished in the Korean Zombie at the buzzer in that five-round war, literally finishing him four minutes 59 of round five. Win over Jeremy Stevens. Close fight against Max Holloway, but just came up short in the end there. And then beat Brian Ortega. Ortega suffered a shoulder injury, but at the end of the day, a win's a win. Yair got the win there, so... 
he's, and he's just such a hard puzzle to solve. You just don't know what he's going to do. He just throws elbows out of nowhere. A little bit like a little bit like Tony Ferguson. Obviously, not so much now. Tony sort of dropped down a little bit, but he just throws things out of nowhere. And you don't quite know what's going to happen. So it's going to be a very hard puzzle to solve for Josh Emmett. But Josh Emmett, eighteen and two, so. He suffered a horrific uh, injury from uh, Jeremy Stevens back in 2018. He's on a five-fight win streak with wins over Michael Johnson, Mursad Bektit, Shane Burgos, Dan Ige, and Calvin Cater. Calvin Cater one was a very close fight. Could have could have been a coin flip to go either way, but at the end of the day, Josh Emmett got the decision win there. He's one of the most powerful strikers in the featherweight division. Him and Volk, I think, are probably the top two up there. And you can make an argument that Josh Emmett's got got more power we've seen some incredible knockouts from him and he's um he can finish the fight at any moment so as showcased in the michael johnson fight he was down and then he, uh and in the last round he was just able to come back and, and finish the fight so he definitely can come from behind and win so you could see yeah rodriguez get out to a, a couple of rounds up ahead and then josh Emmett finished the fight out of nowhere so that is definitely a case um that could be in this fight prediction for this one Really interesting fight here. This is, an, again, another coin flip of a fight. I think Yair Rodriguez, just, I think just the puzzle is too, is too might be a little bit too tough to solve for Josh Emmett. So I could just see Yair just throwing out a strike out of nowhere and, and finishing the fight. So it wouldn't, but it wouldn't surprise me though if Josh Emmett was able to finish the fight as well. We know that how powerful of a striker he is. So I wouldn't be surprised if he won, but I do pick Yair in this fight um, just. And then the main event, the big main event, Islam Makachev up against Alexander Volkanovsky. So Islam Makachev, the lightweight champion, uh, is up against Volkanovsky, who's coming up from featherweight. So he's a featherweight champion moving up to try and become a double champ. But not only that, but try and become champ champ on home soil in Australia. He hasn't had the chance to defend his featherweight belt in Australia, but he'll actually be able to get the chance to get a second belt in Perth. At UFC 284. So the odds for this fight, Islam Makachev is $1.26, and Alex Volkanovsky, who is the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, is $3.90, and quite a heavy underdog. So I will talk about that a little bit later, but it's a very heavy underdog. I'm just going to say that. Um, but yeah, Islam Makachev, 23-1. His last loss came back all the way back in 2015. He's on an 11-fight win streak since that, and his last fight, huge submission win against Charles Oliveira, at UFC 280, when Charles Oliveira being um, has the most submissions in the history of the UFC, and Islam Makachev was just able to go in there and, and really tie that submission up very, very quickly. So, yeah, a very impressive win for him. People talk about he hasn't had a lot of tough opponents or as tough as maybe a Volkanovski, but you can only beat who you've got in front of you, and Islam's done that, as we've mentioned, 11 fights in a row that he's won. So I don't think you can really put that down to Islam's fault. So... Then moving on to Alex Volkanovski, 25 and 1, going up to lightweight, as I mentioned, become a two division champion. So the only, just a quick sort of stat for you there. Only people to do this. There's only been six people in the UFC's history to be champions of two separate divisions. Randy Couture, BJ Penn, and George St. Pierre, they both uh, were champions of two divisions, but not simultaneously. But then you've got the four in Conor McGregor, Daniel Cormier, Amanda Nunes, and Henry Cejudo have all held belts in two divisions simultaneously. So Alex Volkanovski can join that club of being the fifth to hold two simultaneously and be the seventh uh, to be champions in two divisions. So big stakes on the line here. Volkanovski on a 22-fight win streak, uh, unbeaten, 12-0 um, in the UFC. So he's been on an incredible run. And just these wins in a row. He, since he beat Chad Mendes, He's gone on to beat Jose Aldo in Rio as well. Uh, Max Holloway back-to-back. -back. Brian Ortega, the Korean Zombie, and then a dominant performance against Max Holloway in their trilogy fight at UFC 276, which was Volkanovski's last fight. So he looked as good as ever there, and he can only... He's just he's looked better every single fight that he's had in the UFC. So in terms of where this fight's won, this is going to be very interesting. So we know Islam is, is going to try and take the fight to the ground. He has got better striking than Khabib, though. A lot of people obviously compare Islam and Khabib because obviously they've trained together for ever since like they were kids. So they've trained for years and years. They are similar, but I do think Islam's got better striking. So Volkanovski does have the better striking out of the two. But if Islam can get Volkanovski down to the ground, then it potentially could be a long night for Volkanovski. But I think if the fight stays on the feet, 
Volkanovs, he's got the better striking, he's got the better movement, and he said as well, he's a, he is a hard puzzle to solve. So I do think if Volkanovs can keep it on the fight, he can get the job done. But if Islam gets to the ground, then it, it could be Islam's fight. So in terms of prediction for this fight, so as I said, if Volk can keep the fight on the feet, I think he can get the job done. If Islam can get him down, which is easier said than done because Volk is a smaller guy, is obviously not as much room to grab for Islam. So it's going to be very interesting if he can get into the ground. And can Volk get back up if he does get taken down? That's the thing. Can Islam keep Volk down? Volk says he trains with these lightweights, welterweights, and even middleweights, and they have said that they struggle to keep him down. It's going to be very interesting. But I think I'm going to back Volk. I think I'm going to back Volkanovski. Uh, I just think he can get the job done. I think he is a hard puzzle to solve, and I think he can keep the fight on the feet for the majority of the fight. Yeah, I do think that Volk can get the job done as well, and he is my guy. I've got to back my guy as well. So I think Volk can get the job done. So I'm really looking forward to these fights, but thanks for everyone for tuning in. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're on our way to trying to reach a 1,000 subscribers, so if you can click the sub button and help support the channel, that'd be very much appreciated. And turn notifications on so you don't miss when I upload any other content. If you want to let me know what you think will happen with the fights, your predictions, who's going to win the main event at UFC 284, any of the main card fights, let me know in the comments below, section below who you think will win. Also, any other questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll get to answering them as well at some point. So enjoy the fights, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Catch you then. Cheers.